Thank you for being here. Um, some of us here were um, are software developers. Some of us are um, business people. Some of us are bloggers. But um, at the end of the day, I would say all of us deal with clients in one form or the other. Um, a blogger might have uh, that one dedicated fan who's always on their back. Then um, one developer might have that uh, client who's saying, who's saying uh, they want videos on a two gig hard drive. <laughs> so all of these things, all of these things, it comes down to say we need to deal with difficult clients. How do I? All right. Um, it comes down to saying we deal with difficult clients. Um, but the, I think the first thing we need to think about is what, what makes a difficult client. I wish we were talking about a difficult client or talking about a difficult service provider. As software developers, as uh, people who make, some people don't like being called developers, as some people who make sites for other people, uh, we might be the difficult one, not the client. Right, being difficult means we're a difficult service provider. So what a difficult service provider typically does, um, something goes bad, a website goes down, they're unavailable. They do not communicate, they run away. They appear 30 days later to collect a rent. Yeah, that's hosting fees. Um, actually, at one time, we had this client who was afraid to deal with us because just before, they had a different service provider who was holding their website for ransom. It was hosted on their, on their servers and they would not release it until they were paid next year's hosting fees in advance. If you are doing that, that is unethical and you do not deserve to be making people's websites. You are not in business. You are there to destroy people. Please, don't do that. Don't do that. But what we want to talk about today is that half. Difficult clients. We are assuming that you do your best to give the best experience to your clients. You want your clients to when they're seated, relax at home, and they think, what's good in my life? They think, that service provider. That's what we're assuming. But when we have a difficult client, a difficult client is someone who wants things out of the normal. I would say most of these issues are because of communication issues. I think if people communicated well, would have uh, less difficult clients, but more on that later. Um, some clients have no appreciation of the space-time continuum. Um, I guess that's a physics term. But um, this is basically lack of understanding how time works. When something needs to be done, they want it done now. They want it yesterday. Right, there's no such thing as having done work yesterday. Because if it has to be done, they need to wait. Uh, some even, I had a client tell me, you know what, yet way too expensive. I can do this myself. I just don't have the time. That's why I hired you. You know what I reply to that? No, nah, do it yourself. Then we'll see. You don't have to be rude about it. All right, so on to the next. All right, so here I'm going to just show a couple of examples. 
typical examples. Honestly, I would also like to hear from you guys what you've, what you've faced out there. Here on number one, we have uh, a client who says, I'm not really sure what I want, but I, I, I want a website that, uh, you know, you decide, you, you decide. But what do you do, sir? Um, I sell, I order groceries, then sell them. I put a small markup. All right, so you want an e-commerce. You know, you are the genius. You are the developer. You have been doing this for the whole of your life. Please, do what you want. All right, so this is a difficult client. Think about it. Because what's going to happen is you're going to make something and it's not going to be it. So, this client gives you the room to decide. Use it. Take advantage of it. But have everything written down. Say, I think we should do A, B, C. If they agree, you write it down. Because if you do not do that, scope will expand. And if scope expands, expenses increase. Expenses increase, you make a loss. Then there's that guy. Uh, isn't, this is, isn't, isn't this part of the requirements? Perhaps uh, they wanted originally, they wanted... Um, say to be to have their website linked to facebook the post the post on the blog it appears on facebook linkedin social media and then two weeks later they learn that they are chatbots and they are saying look you said you're going to integrate with facebook so that means a chatbot should be in there has anyone faced anything like this before and, oh, okay. Oh, it's come on, come on. <laughs> These things. All right. Here's the thing. This is a scope issue similar to that. Same style. Have it written down and agree that additional items in scope need to be paid for. Uh, mind you, you should understand your value. You have skills that someone else does not have and that they should pay for to access. Do not underestimate your worth. So if something was not in the original scope, please, please charge for it. It will benefit us all. I had a client come to me saying, the last person I worked with, they didn't charge me for more items. And, uh, and uh, I can't. Then, uh, Mr. I needed this done yesterday. Ah, that's, that's the guy I was talking about. On to the next. We don't need to repeat that guy. But at least we understand that guy. Ah, then this one sends you emails at 2 a.m. Ah, normally, the funny thing about this person, normally they're an older guy, married with children, and you are wondering what they are doing up at 2 a.m. writing an email. But somehow they managed to find the time. This guy, you tell them, no, my working hours are this. You have to be, you have to be clear about boundaries. I mean, you agree to do something, you are the professional. So tell them when it will be done. Don't, don't leave them guessing. That's how they take advantage and ask you to work weekends, Christmas time even. Ah, then my favorite one. I, I don't like that color. Everything is fine. Yeah, everything is fine, but that color, that color is just horrible. You fix the color. Yeah, the color is fine now, but I, I don't like that thing. At the bottom, change it, you change it. Ah, I don't like. I don't like. There's too much. 
Anyone ever had a client like that? Oh, so these clients are common. I thought, I thought Zimbabwe has made good clients. Well, maybe international clients are better. All right. Here, when someone is finicky about little things, it shows little understanding of what they're trying to achieve. A website is not... is not uh, something to flash, but it's supposed to achieve particular results. Why do they want a website in the first place? Do they just want to show people their swag? That's really ever the case. If it is, if the whole purpose of the website is to show swag, then that client is right, they're not being difficult. But if it is not, they want to achieve something. They want more, more people to view the website. They want better SEO. They want more people who write, uh, who send messages through. They want more people to reach them via social media. There's always a goal. Be clear with them. That's what they want. Because with this client, you left trouble going live. You never go live until you put your foot down and say, we're going live. The goals you want are there. And once you go live, more often than not, they won't have anything else. Then uh, won't this take five minutes? People will get this slide, right? Ah, all right, you get this slide. You check that one out. On to the next. Then um, this one, this first lady here, yeah? she tells you, I want a website, margins 15 millimeters, the background color, cyan blue, hash 1B33FF, or, or they tell you exactly what they need. In their head, it makes sense. But you've been doing this for years, months, days even. But uh, you can already tell that this is, this is going nowhere. This client, same like the one before, you tell her, you ask, what are you trying to accomplish? Tell her the better ways to do this and propose them. Remember, you know better than they do. You know better than your clients do about this. This is your profession. You are the best at this. I'm sure if you go into their field and you do the same, they'll tell you, relax. This is our field. We'll handle it. You need to assure them. Make sure they feel. I don't know what I want, but I don't want that. Sounds familiar? Uh, you know, I said I want a website that will get me into 2019. I want my business to be spearheaded into the next century. <laughs> but this, this will not get me anywhere. It's 2018 for goodness sake. Do the people still even use this? All right. This client would be very, 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 very careful about this client. The best thing to tell this client is, nope, we can't work together. Because they will not compromise. Trust me, if someone is bold enough to act like that, they will be on your back. You will redo the site five times. And they will dump you. And they will say, I met a developer who was simply the worst. The trick with this one, you want to identify them at the interview stage. When a client calls you and says, come, let's talk about this site we want, they are interviewing you. They're saying, would this guy be able to make my site? But it's your opportunity to interview them back. 
you interview them. You see, if you, this character reveals itself early, the fussy person who says, you know, I want, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to act it. I don't know how to act it, but they're just fussy. Then uh, this guy, actually, let's not talk about that guy. Anyone want to tell me their experiences with a client? Anyone? Yes. Or oh, they do not know what they want, but they pick five different websites saying this is what I want. I guess that one is okay. They're not too bad. They're not too bad. All the websites will be totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, with that one, they have something that they're seeing similar on all those sites. Get to the root of it. Try to find out what you mean. If necessary, act stupid. Say, oh, what do you mean here? What do you like? Ah, I'm not getting it. Until you get to the bottom. Because most often, it's something that they want. They may like the blog aspect. They may like a specific news format, but they can't say it. So until they explain it to you like you're a child, you won't get it. And if you don't get it still, then uh, there's going to be issues going forward. Sometimes you just have to let go in a moment. Go on to the next slide. So, stay calm. <laughs> uh, telling people to stay calm is literally telling them not to stay calm. Someone once told me you'd have better luck baptizing a kid than telling a group of people to calm down. So whatever you do, calm down. When a client says what they have to say, keep your cool. Right. These clients we just talked about, they're all difficult clients. There are other examples, even worse clients. We've had bad experiences. But the worst thing you can do is to have your feelings escalate along with the timbre of your client. The key is communication. Right. What I've been talking about here is you're already in the situation. You're, as of right now, you already have a client acting that way. So we're trying to diffuse that situation. Those are the solutions I was offering here. But it all lies in the communication. If a client is to let it all out, let them. People feel a sense of achievement when they say what they need to say. It's only after they've finished saying it that they're ready to listen. So let them speak, let them speak listen actively, Take, take the main points. Focus on those points. Communicate back. Always communicate back. Even when things are bad, give updates. I know it's often hard to say, or oh, give you daily updates or weekly updates. You might actually not have to say that at all. That's a promise which you might not keep. But on the ground, when something happens, give an update. We're saying we're trying to diffuse the situation. There's already some mistrust. You hate the way they talk to you. You tell them, look, if this and this continues, I can no longer work with you. Or for us to continue working, let us change A, B, C. You have to say this. Do not be afraid. Otherwise, people will stumble all over you. And please, write it down. 
whatever you agree, write it down, whether it's an email, whether it's an official contract, there should be a reference where one day you say, hey, remember when we had that disagreement and we agreed on this, which I sent you on that email, and then you can move forward. Otherwise, if you do not do, the, if you do not take care of the situation, it puts a bad reputation on your brand. Your brand is everything. Your brand is your future clients. In fact, it's much easier to get work from an existing client or a previous client than from a new client. Sure, you had your disagreements. But let the way you solve it allow you to have future work. If they're too bossy, they should know that the next time they're working with you, they don't treat you like that. <laughs> if all else fails, if all else fails, not everyone is meant to be your client. Fire them. So now, how do I prevent all of this from happening? All right, let's take a look at that. You are the parent, you are in charge. You don't have to watch Zootopia for the third time today. Anyone here has kids? Oh, very few youngsters. Ah! <laughs> All right, who's the professional? May the professional please raise their hand. Who's the professional? <laughs> who's the professional? Really, really, guys, 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 who's the professional? Yes, yes, you are the professional. You know what you're doing. You are the professional. Remember that. If, it's, if it makes it easier, each time you wake up in the morning, just point at yourself, you, you are the professional. Because as the professional, you know what needs to be done. So the client who is interfering in the work, they do not know what needs to be done. They insist that they know what needs to be done, but the truth is they don't. You tell them, please, give me room to do my work. Do I tell you how to do your job? You can say it sweetly. It still sounds as sharp, but you can say it nicely. They'll understand. The customer is not the king. We've all been told that the customer is king. That's a lie. That's a lie. But the customer must feel like a king. Because the king gets their way, even if it's wrong. You are the professional. You know the solution. Let them know it's the solution, but make them feel important. Listen to what they say. Acknowledge it. Take note of it. And if there's something that is you think differently, express it immediately. I would like to put those adverts on the first page as the main is the main marquee, but that will turn off customers. Anyone who visits your site will leave immediately. I have a better solution. Why not a slide of your activities, what you do best? I can always put those adverts, front page, if you really insist, but my professional opinion I'm saying don't do it. The consequences of that will be upon you. Sounds scary, doesn't it? The client feels the same, and they'll understand that your professional opinion matters most. How many of you are guilty of this? Starting a project with nothing written down. You meet for a five-minute meeting and uh, you agree on having uh, a website 
that does A, B, C. How many? How many are guilty of this? Oh, one guy, two, three. All right, at least, at least, I would say that's, that's a good number, small number. But uh, write things down, please, guys. If it's not written down, it does not exist. The client can change their mind at the very last minute, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about it. You can try to say, but hey, we agreed on this, and they'll counter, but I paid you this. Uh, but you paid me for that and that. Do you still want more money? Or oh, that's it. And you feel intimidated. There's absolutely nothing you can do. But if you have something written down, you can always come back, say, look, on the email of the 23rd of February, we agreed on this. Or better yet, if it is a big project, have a proper contract. What are the consequences of not paying? What are the requirements? What are the consequences of not fulfilling all those requirements? Everyone is clear, and it's enforceable in court. I know many of you, if not all, have never been to court with a client, but it happens. As a side note, it's good as entrepreneurs to have legal representation of some sort. Have a lawyer friend. You know, these things, they happen out of the blue. But that's a side note. All right. Remember also, not all prospects turn into a client. Boz was saying this is before conflict. We started after conflict happens, and we're talking about before the conflict begins. Before the conflict begins, you need to decide, is this person worthy to be your client? You are the professional, and someone has to be worthy to become your client. I know you're used to being picked. You are worthy to make our website. But at the same time, is the client worthy to get your services? What is the type of client you're targeting? How much are you charging? Does this client share the same values as you? Do they understand the value of your work? When you have conflicts in these issues, these conflicts will turn into difficult clients. So you need to think about this. Before you begin work with a client, just think, can we work with this person? This client, uh, they don't have the money, but is there a non-monetary benefit we can get? Um, if there are non-monetary rewards, perhaps it can be worth it. If not, you need to weigh it out. I can't answer these questions for you, but these will at least guide you to say, is this client worth it? And of course, the last point, if there are no clients, there's no business. Don't be quick to say, we can't deal with this client. Sometimes the trouble is worth it. If a client is paying 10 times what they normally, what you normally get for the same project, and they are pouring abuse on you, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure sometimes you can take it, just take it for the team. So that's it. No clients, no business. <laughs>